Good all viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses on bringing to you relevant information or relevant news regarding the continent of Africa. Today we shall be focusing on a negative topic. My name is Case Kivinda. Today I'd like to focus on the country uh, South Sudan post-independence. Now before I can do that, I need to give you a bit of a background information on how the country was formed. You see, before 2011, South Sudan was part of Sudan, and they were formed thus by their former colonizer, the United Kingdom. And when they were one country, they formed the largest country in Africa, covering a mass of 2.5 million square kilometers. However, before I give to you this brief outline on the history of Sudan, I'd like to give you my five thoughts as to why I think there is tension in the region. Now, the first point is religion. You see, in the north, mostly Muslims reside, and in the south, you have mostly Christians and animists. Now, some of you may wonder, what is an animist? Well, that is a person that believes that all things, animals, plants, water, rocks, climate systems, even the spoken word, as well as buildings and artifacts, all are animate and alive. The second point that I have is tribalism. Now, this is this occurred even after South Sudan became independent of Sudan. You see, there's so many different tribes that reside within this country that was artificially formed by its former colonizer, the United Kingdom. And these tribes were forced to coexist somehow. The third point is oil. Now, in the late 1970s, oil was found right on the border between North and South Sudan, with both, of course, claiming to have a right to it, causing further tension. The fourth point I have is uh, unfair distribution of wealth. Now, this can be with regards to oil, but for some of the tribes, this also is regards to cattle, which they see as their uh, sign or show of wealth. Now, and the fifth point that I have is sort of related to cattle, and this point is climate change. Due to a climate change, uh, less people are able to keep the cattle the way they used to, meaning that this cattle is disappearing, causing further unfair distribution of wealth. Now on to a brief description as to the history of Sudan. In 1955, civil war begins. In 1956, Sudan becomes independent from its former colonizer, the United Kingdom. Now, in the north, you'll find Nubians and others who are a product of millennia of mixing with Egyptians and Arab traders via the Red Sea and now call themselves Arabs and are mostly Muslim. The southern parts of Sudan, uh, the people physically resemble more closely to people in Eritrea, Ethiopia and East Africa, as they are darker in complexion. Uh, in 1972, civil war ends when South Sudan gets its autonomy. In 1978, Chevron finds oil between the border of South and North Sudan. Five years later, in 1983, President Ghaffar Nimairi ends South Sudan's autonomy. In 2005, Second Civil War ends uh, and South Sudan gets its autonomy back. In 2011, South Sudan becomes independent, but sadly in 2013, civil war begins or starts in South Sudan. Now, I've already given you five of my thoughts as to why there is tension in the region of Sudan. And following the civil war in South Sudan, which has started in 2013, two years after its independence, um, touches upon two of those. The first being tribalism, and the second being unfair distribution of wealth. You see, as in November 2013, the president of South Sudan, that president being Salva Kiir, uh, who is from the Dinka ethnic group, dismissed the then vice president Rik Makhar and his cabinet, Rik Makhar being from the newer ethnic group. Now, the dismissal follows Kiir's decision to replace members of the army and government following rumors of a possible coup which was supposed to um, ensue in December of 2013. Ethnic related violence started to spread furthermore within militia groups carrying out attacks in villages and areas known to be inhabited by either Dinka or Nur. Now both parties have signed at least seven different peace deals with the last one being signed in August of 2015 and both parties claim that the other party has broken at least one of those agreements within the peace deal. So that touched upon the thought of tribalism. Let's now look at the unfair distribution of wealth. And with that, we have to look at the more rural areas where the pastoral communities live. You see, these pastoral communities, communities 
mostly live off their wealth and that wealth is cattle. Uh, sadly, these pastoral communities are under attack by youth that carry mostly weapons such as machetes and guns where they forcefully grab, with which they forcefully grab the cattle from the pastoral communities. Uh, local authorities have said that since independence in 2011, at least 5,000 civilians have died directly due to raids of cattle. The police in the area, or the police at large, have said that they can do very little regarding the matter because uh, these pastoral communities live in rural areas, so it is hard to get there. And when they finally do, these police find themselves outmatched and outnumbered as um, the raiders have more uh, sophisticated weaponry than the police themselves. So there you have it. That's my synopsis and thoughts as to what is going on in the region of Sudan. Now, in South Sudan, after signing seven peace deals without any peace in sight, we can safely say that simply signing these, these deals is not enough. More needs to be done. And I think that peace can be brokered when those five points that I keep bringing up are addressed. Now, granted, it may take a while, but at the same time, some of it is already being implemented. You see, South Sudan gained independence from Sudan. And this fixed the religion problem because in the north you now have the Muslims or most of the Muslims and in the south most of the Christians reside as long as the animists, as well as the animists, sorry. Now, this peace that has been brokered is somewhat tested with the finding of oil right on the border between North and South Sudan, with both sides claiming right to it. Now, I agree, both sides should have access to it, so there needs to be a stringent set of terms and conditions set up that both parties need to adhere to at all costs in order to maintain the peace. Now, South Sudan uh, is a bit more complex because ethnicity comes into play, and I think that this is solved by addressing the other two situations that I mentioned, that of uh, unfair, sorry, unfair distribution of wealth, and climate change. So the original party needs to regroup, you know, the president and the vice president need to reform the original government and need to work together on fixing the problem of unfair distribution of wealth and climate change. You see, I think ethnic uh, cleansing or ethnic differentiation comes about when one party is doing slightly better than the other and they try to justify this by um, ethnic differentiation. So they need to create some kind of synergy, some kind of cohesion. And they can do this by focusing on a problem together. Now, what better than to start with climate change? Now, we already said that the populations mainly grow cattle. So the government needs to come up with programs that help the population in keeping this cattle and even uh, fight climate change at the same time whilst uh, growing more and more cattle. And of course, they need to focus on many other forms of, of, of agriculture in, in the area. Now, once this has been set up, they can focus on health and further education of their people, their population. Now, mind you, I already said this may take a while, and some people even say that it takes 50 years to change a mindset. So this will not happen overnight. Now, people, this is what my views are. Please let me know what you think. I'm very curious as to see what you come up with. Let me know in the box below or send me an email, whichever. Trust me, I will read it because I find it usually interesting what you think of the situation. And if possible, if there's enough communication in this, I can even come up with a follow-up video on this matter. There you have it. That was my negative topic of today. You can subscribe to me on YouTube and on Facebook. And you can follow me on Twitter. That's it for today. My name is Case Kiwina. Goodbye.